two things. Wherever there is a demand, there will be a supply. The contract marriages, this is a typical kind of a phenomena in Hyderabad. I don't know how many of you have seen 1980s movie by name Bazaar of uh, Nasruddin Shah, then uh, Smita Patil, Haruk Sek. They have acted in that movie. So in that they have shown about this contract marriages in Hyderabad where the elderly people, mostly from the Gulf country, they will come here and they will get ma married to a minor girl, maybe 15, 16 year old girl. It's like a contract and uh, that contract is short term contract actually. After 10, 15 days, they may divorce that girl and uh, they may give some money to her parents, some part of the money to those uh, uh, who are the mediators or who are the kajis for such marriages. Of late now, this phenomena is under control, but the contract marriages or muta marriages, what we call here in Hyderabad. Similarly, in uh, our country, because of the skewed sex ratio, some of the states in North India, like Haryana or maybe Rajasthan and all, so girls from South side, Southern states, they are getting traffic for the marriage purpose there because of the skewed sex ratio. Adoption is another form of uh, trafficking because of the, the guidelines which are there by Central Adoption Resource Agency, CARA guideline, what we say. The guidelines are very strict and one who has to adopt a child has to go through that regular, rigorous procedure. So many checks are there, verifications are there to avoid that. Many times this illegal adoption kind of thing is happening. I have detected many such cases here in and around Hyderabad in last 15 years. There are many other forms of trafficking. And um, recently we have seen where uh, the girls from the Northeast India they are getting traffic because the skin is fair for skin grafting purpose. That this, so we do not know what kind of uh, uh, trafficking will surface suddenly and we have to prevent uh, organ trade. I have busted one um, international racket which was running from uh, our state. The victims were from our state. They were taken to Delhi. From Delhi, they were taken to Sri Lanka, Turkey, and other countries for kidney transplantation. And the documents were prepared like they are the family member of that person uh, with whom that kidney, kidney has to be transferred. And we have detected that racket and we arrested those uh, people, including some nephrologists involved in that racket. So uh, the trafficking actually is a lot of, uh, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. It's almost $150 billion industry, what someone has estimated. It may be bigger than that. And it's a second highest crime in the world after the drugs trade. Uh, this map is a little old map, but you can see those countries, especially erstwhile Soviet Union. The lot, this is the area where, uh, from where the uh, women or children, they are getting traffic more in number. Some countries in uh, even the Southeast Asia, you can see there also very high percentage of those who are getting uh, traffic. India comes in the second category, high category. We are uh, receiving victims from the other state as well as we are also destination nowadays, like for Nepal, Bangladesh, and then of late now, these escort services are very popular now. So even the girls from the or there's us while Soviet Union countries, they are coming to the metros in our country. 15 days visit visa, they will come here, they will go back. I was talking about the demand and supply. So wherever there is a demand, suddenly the supply will increase. Here in Delhi, a couple of years back, there were Commonwealth Games and suddenly the spoken English classes started there in New Delhi in that uh, area of uh, GB Road, where brothels are, or red light area is there. So one NGO filed PIL in high court and then high court issued order to the police. And their big raids were conducted and all of them were drove out of uh, Delhi that time. So suddenly demand will increase because of some particular phenomena. I still remember in World Cup football in Germany, they have legalized the prostitution for that particular period. 
till the football matches are there and uh, then after that again they have uh, lifted that so the temporary people are even legalizing the prostitution when there is a demand or there is a high demand and the vulnerability of this trafficking victim is many reasons are there one is the poverty of course it's a major reason and uh, natural calamities we have seen in nepal also the earthquake many children many women they got trafficked so whenever there is a natural calamity the people are more vulnerable and these traffickers take advantage of that particular situation i am coming to a special focus uh, on the area of human smuggling and human trafficking many people they confuse among these two we you, we have seen recently an example of a, a couple of gujarat they their bodies were found frozen bodies of them were found on the borders of canada and us this is a typical example of uh, human smuggling because they themselves volunteered to go through the other route not a legal way to go through that agent paying him huge amount of money they went to canada first and from canada illegally they were going to us and that time there was change in the climate and because of the adverse or worse climate their bodies frozen bodies were found so this is a part of human smuggling racket human trafficking can happen anywhere it can happen in one building also or within the house also one house only but for human smuggling international border is always required this is another difference in human smuggling the person who is getting smuggled he is also part of that accused gang because he is voluntary whereas in human trafficking the person who is getting trafficked he is a victim we have to rescue them at earliest we have seen many trafficking racket from our country long back in 1998 98 there was a case in us where to california from the krishna district of andhra pradesh to uh, california the person by name uh, lucky reddy bal reddy he was running a racket of sex slaves he used to traffic minor girls from krishna district to california in the name of hotel industry but uh, they were used as his own sex slaves and in one night it seems because of the gas leakage one of the girl died other was in serious condition and he was taking them by dumping them in the dicky of vehicle so one lady at night 12 o'clock has uh, noticed it she has uh, informed to 911 i think and uh, immediately the police swung into action there was an inquiry after that this fellow was convicted for uh, almost for 8 years and huge amount of money was paid as uh, compensation to this victim by this fellow if you see other side of this person there is engineering college in his name in a place called mailavaram in krishna district lucky reddy already engineering college so anything can happen in our country so the persons who are into trafficking they are very powerful person you can understand normalization of exploitation this is very very important thing the, as early as possible we have to rescue the people who are getting trafficked if they are not rescued in time they think their birth is for this purpose only this phenomenon we call it as normalization of exploitation there is another phenomenon of stockholm syndrome where the victim they start loving the those exploiter also because they are showing some soft corner they are every day they may give a, a, a flower to them every day they may give some good food to them because they are using them so that relation develop between them is known as a stockholm syndrome if you see now the this trade women and girls almost 71% are women and girls who are getting trafficked 29% are men and boys sexual exploitation still that is the number one cause of uh, human trafficking 54% forced labor 38% and 8% other purposes including organ trafficking now how to stop this trafficking today all of us we are going to think about it and we normally the we the police our role stops at raid and rescue 
So beyond rescue, we never think generally. But here you can see in many of our operations, we have gone beyond rescue for the rehabilitation, for restoration, for repatriation or reintegration of these victims. And that's the reason we are able to break the cycle of sex trade, giving the alternate source of livelihood to these victims. They are now independent on their feet. They are not getting re-trafficked because of this uh, other angle, what we are thinking. Similarly, there are three Ps, prevention, it's one, one, the first major thing, then protection of rescued victims and prosecution of those traffickers. So these three Ps are very, very important. Similarly, the three areas, the source area from where victims get trafficked, the transit where the temporary, it's like a transit place, they will be exploited. And from there, they go to the final destination where the final exploitation happens over the years. So these three places, source, transit, and destination, and all these three places, we have to act. Especially in the source area, the preventive approach is very, very important so that the vulnerable victims, they should not get traffic from that particular area. Similarly, destination area, where now, just now, Mr. Ramaswamy, while introducing me, was telling about uh, closing the places and all. And uh, Subarav Garu was also telling you. I have a couple of slides I will show you how we have closed it. So destination, the permanent solution is demand reduction. I'm going to talk on that also. But the most important thing is the police alone can't stop human trafficking. It's a multidisciplinary approach is required. All the stakeholders, maybe law enforcement officer, prosecutor, judiciary, civil societies, women and children and the community. They have to join hands of uh, law enforcement, hands of police to combat trafficking. Uh, legally, we have very strong laws in our country. Immoral Traffic Prevention Act of 1956 got again amended in 1986. And our Indian Penal Code, after the Nirbhaya case of uh, Delhi, they brought the definition of human trafficking in Indian Penal Code 370A. This is the section where human trafficking is now defined in Indian Penal Code. Similarly, we have pro protection of children <coughs> from uh, Sexual Offense Act of 2012. This is a gender neutral act applied to boys as well as girls. Similarly, we have Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Amendment Act 2015. Child Labor Act to prevent forced labor, 1986. The below 14 years old children, they should not work anywhere. We have right to education act in India where children below 14 compulsory, they should be in the school and government should uh, open the schools for them. Similarly, bonded labor act 1976 and organ transplantation act where we can prevent the transplant of organ, not only kidney, but other organs also. So demand reduction is very, very important in human trafficking and uh, um, uh, let me tell you, there is only one country in the world which is successful in controlling the prostitution or sex trafficking to a bigger extent or greater extent, and that country is Sweden. In Sweden, they had a serious problem. So they brought all the stakeholders on one platform, trained them, empowered them. They have made the demand where the clientele or customers who generate demand made more punishable the heavy fine or, or the imprisonment was increased. And all these things has really helped Sweden to control prostitution to a larger extent. In uh, United Andhra Pradesh from 2006 to 2009, there was a project of United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and uh, first anti-human trafficking unit was formed in 2006 in Hyderabad in the CID where I was superintendent of police and I was in charge of that unit. As a part of that unit, we got opportunity to go beyond our borders to many brothels in country, maybe Delhi, Bangalore, then Pune, Mumbai, Goa. We have gone with our team and we have rescued the girls, more than thousand girls and women and children we have rescued from the brothels that time. And that program for three years was really eye opener for all of us. Nowadays, if you see, Almost in every district of uh, our country, anti-human trafficking units are opened by the government. The very first unit was opened here in Hyderabad in CID. 
and I was in church for that in 2006. I was talking about the closing down the, uh, these places of exploitation. Laws are very stringent about that. The Immoral Traffic Prevention Act, 1956, amended in 1986. There is one section 18, clause one, where uh, the subdivisional magistrate, we call it a uh, revenue divisional officer or deputy collector, or the commissioner of police having the additional district magistrate rank, they have power to close down the brothels at the public place. If minor girls are exploited, that brothel can be sealed for three years. And if the adult victims are there, the brothel can be closed down for one year. And there is no appeal in any civil, civil and criminal court of India, not in high court, not in Supreme Court. This kind of stringent provisions are there in country for the closing down these places of exploitation. But uh, unfortunately, the will is lacking. Luckily, in last five years, I am in my commissariat. We have closed more than 200 brothels so far. These are few brothels. There are 1700 red light identified areas in our country. There is no word red light in any law of India where there is a license or permission. In Amsterdam, where there is a license to the brothels, there will be a red light hanging on the window of that particular house. I don't know whether the red light word has come from the Netherlands or Holland to our country. Britishers for enjoyment of their own soldiers, they open up red light area in Bombay in 1917. In that area, there was one white lane where the prostitutes from Europe were there. That's why it was known as the white lane area. Now it is not there and of course now, the, from the Kamatipura, it has been spread to many other areas. And of late now, the brothel-based prostitution, um, the less number of brothels, more it is the mobile through the <coughs> escort services, through the websites like Locanto, uh, through the uh, Twitter handles, through Facebook pages, through Darknet, all the trafficking groups are there. In 2005 and 2006, when I was superintendent of police of one of the districts, I came across a serious problem where the what particular community by name Domara, their generations are there in the prostitution. So girl born in this community should be in the prostitution. So here we involved government department, different uh, agencies and non-government department also. And this project was named as ASRA. Initially, we have rescued the victims, arrested the traffickers, prosecuted them, and given the alternatives to the children to study in the worksite school or the bridge school of the government. Then the victims which were rescued, they were given alternative source of uh, livelihood through the government uh, different schemes. Similarly, the civil society has trained them for the life skill and uh, couple of them got uh, employment even in the private industry. And for two years almost, we could reduce prostitution by 90%. And so this uh, project... <laughs> प्रदेश हैदराबाद से 50 किलोमीटर जिला नलगोंडा में यदागिरी गुट्टा मंदिरों की नगरी भी कहा जाता है इसे दूर दूर से श्रद्धालु भगवान नरसिंह स्वामी के दर्शन के लिए आते हैं इस पवित्र नगरी का एक चेहरा और भी है यहीं पर घर हैं करीब 30 परिवारों के डोमरा जाति के ये लोग तीन पीढ़ियों से यहां बसे हैं और हमेशा ही इन बंद दरवाजों के पीछे जिस्म का धंधा चलता रहा इस जाति की हर लड़की पेशावृति और हर पुरुष दलाली से जुड़ा रहा इसी साल नलगोंडा डिस्ट्रिक्ट में आए नए पुलिस सुप्रिंटेंडेंट महेश भागवत पुराने रिकॉर्ड देखकर पता चला कि बेश्या वृत्ति से जुड़ी औरतों पर बार बार रेट पड़ती जेल होती लेकिन बाहर आकर वो फिर से उसी धंधे में महेश भागवत ने तय किया कि समस्या का हल शायद कहीं और है 
अपनी ही मुहिम को नाम दिया आसरा सभी औरतों से एक मुलाकात तय हुई कुछ जानी मानी संस्थाओं की मदद से शुरू हुआ रोजगार के नए साधन जुटाने और कुछ नई कलाओं को सिखाने का दौर इसमें प्रमुख अगरबत्ती बनाना दस एकड़ जमीन पर फूलों की खेती करने का निश्चय हुआ येदागिरी गुच्चा के हर मंदिर ने वादा किया ये सारा माल खरीदने का इसके साथ साथ शुरू हुआ शिक्षा का दौर वे आर एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट लाइफ स्किल लाइक टाइम मैनेजमेंट मनी मैनेजमेंट एंड ऑल्सो अबाउट आवर कॉन्फ्रेंस एवरीथिंग जनरली वे आर एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट लाइफ स्किल वे आर काउंसिलिंग ऑन एंड ऑल्सो वे आर काउंसिलिंग ऑन कम्युनिकेटिंग स्किल इन परिवारों के ज्यादातर बच्चे स्कूल नहीं जाते थे सभी बच्चों को पहले कुछ ब्रिज स्कूलों में रखने के बाद सरकारी स्कूलों में चाल दिया गया और अब ये है इन गलियों का आम नजारा पीढ़ियों से चला आ रहा कलंक ही नहीं धुला शिक्षा की रोशनी में आने वाली पीढ़ियां भी जैसे निखर गई so school has a really yielded good result and we have seen a lot of crime reduction after controlling the prostitution because that has controlled the anti social behavior in the community there this project got two awards in us in 2006 at boston this awards like weber civil law enforcement award and uh, civil and uh, human rights award in the international association of chief of police conference we received this award there recently in 2018 again when i become commissioner of police here in 2016 i noticed the problem is still there so we conducted raid in the same town of yadgir gutta where 34 minor girls and three major girls were rescued and including 42 organizers and initially the ladies in the brothels who are running this prostitution racket they claim that these girls are their own children then high court order for their dna testing and dna testing it was realized that out of uh, 34 minor girls only three girls their dna match 31 girls they were illegal from where they brought and uh, employed them in the prostitution then that is still unknown maybe run away children or maybe sold children to this brothel so these cases are under trial now this brothels were closed by us taking orders from sub divisional magistrate and uh, i am happy to tell you at present completely it is under control now up late now this online sex racket this website like locanto you just check in that which town you want a girl from which country you want men men seeking men men seeking women women seeking women this kind of classifieds are there in this locanto and this locanto of course so the servers are in the us not in our country and uh, admin, admin person here who is running whenever we are giving information he will just delete that particular information and next day those trafficker they will upload with new name new numbers new photograph it's a big problem for us coming to the prevention of trafficking for forced labor in 2017 our government of india has started a program by name operation smile to bring smile on the faces of children so those children working in hazardous industry rescue them similarly to trace those missing children this program was launched and this program is conducted twice a year in the month of january and in the month of july in 2017 when we started the program from the brick in in two days we have rescued 370 children 
they were from odisha their parents were working in the brick kilns around hyderabad and they were also employed the children and for the six months the wages were 12000 rupees only that means 2000 rupees per month and uh, working in hazardous industry it is against the law it is exploitation it is human right violation so after the raid what to do with these children was a big question before all of us because the parents were working here so keeping them in some hostels was not advisable sending them back when the parents are in hyderabad that was also not advisable solution so then we started the concept of work side school the schools in odia language in hyderabad at the same place where their parents are working the schools we started with the help of district administration the collectors came forward they extended mid day meal scheme program the brick in owners association they have helped in sponsoring the transport sponsoring the uniform for these children and uh, slowly slowly we have seen the change in situation in last four years more than 3000 children who could have been working as a bonded labor or child labor they got educated from this work site school once they go back to odisha they are continuing education they will be one standard higher when they go back so this pattern was appreciated by even the nobel laureate kailash satyarthi ji this year we have started even marathi medium schools for uh, those uh, brick in worker who are coming from maharashtra to hyderabad so their children we started uh, marathi language schools also two schools are running with koti strength now this project again got awarded in 2018 in us this is the leadership award in human and civil rights i want to talk to you about very important aspect of missing children in 2013 government of india in the supreme court actually has given a decision that any child missing is a child traffic and police should compulsory register the case of missing child as a traffic children and detect it so government started couple of websites also like this track the missing child dot gov dot in and then khoyapaya dot gov dot in these are two lines similarly there is a child line working with 1098 number whenever you are coming across any missing child you can information you can upload the information on this website or you can inform the child line also that will be really useful to connect them with their parents begging someone was talking in the beginning about the begging it's big mafia it's an organized racket we in our indian culture we think that uh, giving arm to someone giving money we will get a lot of uh, uh, in hindu culture we said punya punya ka kaam hai so we'll get it but uh, here those organized gang people they will deploy these small small children and evening they will pick them they will collect money from them and what money is going to the children's pocket no one knows this sleeping child here might be drugged might have given some sleeping pills or something whole day the child how child will sleep whole day please tell me please understand all these things 2017 just now they sir was telling this uh, us department of state has awarded our work with you uh, this trafficking person report hero award there are many challenges while we are working to control this human trafficking so just now i was talking about this websites where this website servers are in foreign country it's very very difficult to completely close these sites then the sex offenders their registration to track them is still a challenge the database is, policing is a state subject in our country so every state having different policing practices a lot of coordination is required for this purpose the third very important thing is priority to this subject this subject is a little uh, neglected subject and uh, many times the priority which is required may not be there and that's the reason these traffickers they are very well organized even across our borders also they have wide network whereas we have the jurisdictional issues we have the legal issues when we are acting on them so we have to keep working and uh, with just one motto that we keep working that what said by mahatma gandhi be the change you want to see in the world we can create that change each one of us really 
we can bring that change that only i want to say for this today's evening so that's all from my side if you have any question the house is open for next 15 minutes thank you thank you mr bhagwat i think uh, everybody will require a few moments to kind of absorb it is not uh, every day that we hear a a, a police um, officer tell us about these things you know law and order kidnapping killing a common but this kind of the subtleties of the human nature or human aberration i would say not even human nature are not common i was uh, reminded of uh, a friend of my father mr c r naidu you may have heard of him uh, he did some work like you he focused on children of life convicts i think the law provides that the children of uh, life convicts can stay in the prison with the parents till they are 5 years old or something afterwards they are thrown on the streets and they end up becoming you know going into prostitution or becoming thieves so my father was uh, uh, had one of his friends set up a, a hostel for life convict children and quite a number of forceful members and from our masonic lodges we adopted children in that hostel and they combined it with a senior citizens forum so they had grandparents on the ground floor and the convicts life convicts children and some of them are brilliant they did really well in academics so when i was hearing your story um, i was reminded of this uh, mr c r naidu's passion and also the other thought before we take up questions is most of us are very cynical that uh, apna desh mein kuch hota nahi you know our system is bad how can i make a difference police is looked with looked at with suspicion they say you know do you think the police will really act but it is amazing to see how people like you are able to function and make a difference within the same system so as you also showed in some of those slides the laws are there i think it just requires a determination and courage to enforce and implement those laws so i think on behalf of everybody i'll be speaking their minds when i say we are really we commend you for your excellent work and uh, we are proud that we have a a person like you amidst us in our city you know it does us proud uh there are some questions which came up on my personal window and also in the chat window and i'll begin with one what are your observations as to why human trafficking and especially prostitution that you uh, showed us about that scheme a particular community are usually centered around religious towns in india is that a pattern and what according to you are the causes so we have some traditional and customary practices devadasi system is one such system actually now though there is a devadasi prohibition act and lot of work has been done now compared to earlier now it is almost under control but still some practices are there uh, those women offer to temple those kind of uh, things and those some communities like uh, domaras here in uh, andhra pradesh and telangana there are uh, bedia community i think in madhya pradesh and rajasthan nut that is another community so there are some communities where uh, traditionally as a customary practice they have adopted prostitution and the girl born in this community they think uh, she is like a wealth for them and through her they want to earn money of late we have seen some changes also these communities now their own children are no more in the prostitution and but they are uh, buying or they are kidnapping or they are picking up some road roadside children and uh, running prostitution through them that kind of thing also i have seen um when i was working as a dig in eluru range you might have heard about pedapuram in is godavari yeah. where in 2009 we closed 13 brothels 300 year old brothels we have closed down and uh, so when there is there is a will we can do a lot of things one of our senior police officer by name amod khan 
when he was the DGP of Goa, that time he has closed down many brothels there in Baina Beach of Goa. But you know the demand is there, the tourists come there, even the migrant population is there. Wherever demand is generated, supply is there. So how to control demand? That is a big question. The city is metros in our country where only the male person is coming there for his livelihood. So as a natural hunger, he will visit this uh, uh, red light areas and uh, they are the main customers most of the time. So this demand and supply is closely related. More than demand, more will be the supply. So right. both sides we have to work, demand side also and supply side also. Yeah. yeah. Mrs. Uh, Indira Narayan was wondering whether uh, any efforts are being made to educate the not so educated lot about this human trafficking as a crime and you know consequences. Is there any institutionalized effort mounted for that? Yeah. See, uh, Telangana government is doing a lot in this regard. We have a specialized women safety wing now, headed by my batchmate only. We have now anti-human trafficking units in all the district commissariate in our Telangana state. Also, we have C teams. So these C teams are going to the schools, colleges, workplaces. It may be the remote workplaces like this brick in industry or the agriculture farming where unorganized kind of laborer are working there. Or if they are going to even the industries and they're creating awareness there. Similarly, mm -hmm. we have some other programs also like in uh, my commissariate and uh, uh, now Cyberabad and Hyderabad commissariate, we have this program uh, by name Mark Darshak, where the this the Cyberabad Security Council, Rajkonda Security Council, Hyderabad Security Council, where the, those industries now, they are partner with the police, when the educational institutions, the central government institution, they are all now on one platform. And we keep doing this awareness program on different, different arenas. Dr. Ravi Ramaswamy, who introduced you, he was wondering something similar. Uh, I think you answered it partly. What's the government doing, uh, doing to educate the public regarding human trafficking so as to discourage their behavior from profiting you know, from these traffickers? I mean, the public, yeah. the community involvement, you said. Sometimes the government is also observing the porn, porn. So pornographic thing, those sometimes some sites are under observation. So those who are surfing those sites and all, and then we will get details about those people. We, we may summon them also. We warn them. Sometimes we even prosecute them. This kind of things are also happening. So you are under observation. That only we want to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scary thing. <laughs> uh, one of the, uh, Mr. Surendranath, one of our classmates uh, is also on the call. He says, uh, you described uh, begging as also one of the types of trafficking. Uh, and especially at many traffic lights, we notice this young children, sometimes very minors holding a small infant in their arms. And usually, you know, a kind of a sympathy is invoked. Uh, is there a, a, a program or a, a, an initiative from the government? Because we keep seeing it every time. See, it is a, again a multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder approach required here. Not only rescuing them, rehabilitation of the children, rehabilitation, uh, and then reuniting with their parents. This is very, very important. So what is required here, actually, the organized program is required, where beyond rescue, their rehabilitation, their reintegration, their restoration, their repatriation should also be taken care of. Many times we involve civil societies and NGOs, they are joining our hands and we have seen that experiment is successful in uh, giving alternate life to these children who are trapped into this begging racket and all. But I told you that culturally, uh, we have very strong belief yeah. that uh, giving, uh, giving this uh, begging money amount or something to those who are begging and we will get, <laughs> we will go to heaven. We will yeah. go to heaven, I think, directly. Right. <laughs> So that yeah. kind of superstitions or uh, the 
misbelief i think we have to create awareness on that the need of a more uh, scientific temper development or which is there in our fundamental duties that is the need of the day yeah the this question is i think uh, more uh, directed at your own uh, professional uh, you know aspect of it amidst so many competing uh, aspects of society which are uh, pressuring your time as a commissioner for example uh, in terms of priority or grade suppose there, there are murders uh, kidnappings there's a law and order there's so many other things that happen every day which the police has to attend to apart from of course other things like traffic and uh, normal routine how does uh, uh, the police system be able to make time for this long term project because this is multi dimensional involves many agencies how have you cracked that just like you helped your student crack the civil services how did you crack this you know uh, uh, I, situation yeah, nice, <laughs> nice question subarwar in fact my background is uh, more like a social worker before joining the police after my graduation almost for 5 years i was working with civil societies in and around pune for rural development for watershed development to with the activists like uh, anna hazare meda patkar narendra dabolkar i work in different organization <coughs> for superstition eradication for rural development for watershed development and that angle has really helped me because i work at the grassroots level so why police should not do that is pakka with me the do's and don'ts i uh, then alternate solution always uh, we have a very strong history maratha history that history says that uh, you cut down the root branches will come down so root cause approach is very much important in any problem i always look for root cause approach there is one uh, a sir of galib that umra bhar galib bhi galti karta raha dhul chehre pe thi aina saaf karta raha acha aina saaf karke kuch nahi hone wala hai that yeah chehra hi saaf karna padega aapko na so that right. is very very important so i always see the other side like the work side school which we have started every year rescuing the same children from the same brick kin that is not a solution so that's why now we started school and now 3000 yeah. children they got educated they are now going into the higher classes we have taken the children to the ipl matches at least one boy he he play ipl tomorrow will be very happy we have taken them to it industries like infosys right whole day they were there watching what is happening here so one of them will join the infosys tomorrow will be happy correct exposure is very very important for vulnerable children and giving them opportunities if i may add to your answer i know you're the distinguished speaker but uh, from my personal experience i think uh, we have had an opportunity to work with mahesh and uh, he had called us during that um, pandemic when it was at its peak we received a call from their commissioner i don't know if mrs uh, shilpa walli is also here today they wanted us to help the migrant labor providing them some uh, you know basic necessities that was common all over the country we were watching that but what mr bhagavat's team asked us is many of our police force themselves in the lower cadre were also seriously impacted by the pandemic so many members on the screen from foswell who contributed and donated money and through our masonic lodges i don't remember the number now but something like 1500 um, packets of uh, you know essentials for a family of four for one week or 10 days through hare krishna we had supplied the point i'm trying to make is and if you have seen the annual report of rajakonda commission rate you will see also a lot of welfare measures for the force that mahesh takes care of so i think one quality to answer to add to the answer that mr bhagwat gave now is empathy apart from being a well informed police officer as an individual he gave an example of his experience in civil society prior to joining so i think if the police officer like mr c r naidu had empathy for the life convicts children so he came up with a solution similarly i think empathy is an important ingredient 
which drives people like uh, you know Mahesh Bhagwat into thinking out of the box and still finding time to do this. So I'll get back to the questions here. Mr. Janikiram Sharma says, why doesn't the police appoint a good Samaritan in every district to keep a tap on the activities of demand creators, thereby you know, curb the demand that you are talking about, including having a tap on the local politicians? But that's the difficult. <laughs> actually, this good Samaritan, no need of appointing them. They keep informing us, actually. We take their services. We don't want to expose them. Right. Yeah. Because uh, information flow should be continued. If we expose them, then information will be stopped. Right. So we have our helpline numbers like we, the WhatsApp is very popular nowadays. So we have circulated on one number, 949061711. We get a lot of information. We keep the name of informant secret. We work on that information. We reward them for the useful information they provided. I see. There are two more questions. The first one is, how do you institutionalize the work done by you in the last five years? Now, once you get promoted, you go to another place. How does your commission rate continue this work? Because usually good. we have seen that this is an individual dependent. A yeah, very good question. In fact, this is a big problem in government organization. We call it uh, uh, predecessor successor syndrome. <laughs> once the office has. Once the officer get transferred, the people think now the new officer, his new policy is so implemented. But there are some practices which are institutionalized. Like the practice of this worksite school is not only now in my commissary. It has gone beyond it. In Mancherial, in Karivnagar, you can see now the Brickin school where these worksite schools are there on the Brickin now. So people, once they realize, yes, this is the solution. In 2001 to 2004, I was a superintendent of police in Adilabad district, the extremists affected, and there we launched a program by name, Police Mik or some Police for You, giving alternate uh, source of livelihood to those who are underground, bringing them out, surrendering them before the government. And their cases also we have considered. So there are a lot of welfare activities, rural development activities we have done in remote area. And permanently we have seen now the new hands joining the extremists so that were not there and we could control that situation. So two prone strategy, that is a action on one hand and second is the development on the other hand, both went simultaneously together and that has helped us. Now you see in the country everywhere, two prone strategy is going on. Mm. So whatever you do, something innovative, people will adopt it maybe with some different name, they will give different name, they don't want that, what you said, to, uh, to give the credit to one particular person, no problem. But at least that methodology, that strategy is adopted. Uh, you were mentioning about annual crime report. I'm very happy that after seeing annual crime report of our commissariate, there are many uh, units in country now. They publish police units, I'm talking. They oh. publish annual crime report. So it's like uh, we get ideas from each other. We learn from each other. Right. I remember one of our other schoolmates, a lot of our classmates are on this call. So I keep referring to uh, one of our schoolmates is uh, your predecessor, Dinesh Reddy. Yes, sir, he was a DGP. And I remember when he became DGP, uh, he initiated something called uh, proximity policing. I think in every you know junction and all, he set up a small kiosk so that there is a feeling amongst the public of um, you know safety policies within reach. But after he finished his office, all those chaos are gone, gone now. You know, they're no longer there. Uh, we have Dr. Air Commodore Dr. A H. S. Arora. He has made a very interesting point, a completely different perspective. He says uh, tofu, the foodstuffs tofu is um, uh, use of that is high for the purpose of growing secondary sex organs which are harvested through human trafficking. So he says one of the preventive measures would be to stop or control the cultivation of soya beans or even import of US tofu, flax seeds, sesame seeds and all. These are all phytoestrogen rich foods. Did you have any 
uh, idea on I this will, aspect? I will study about it. I will, uh, this is something new to me. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. know that in US from, uh, not only from India, from other countries also, especially in the West Coast, labor trafficking is there for cultivation oh. and other purposes. <laughs> what kind of crops they're cultivated, I do not know. But labor trafficking is very high. I see. Yeah. One other question is, uh, given the range and bandwidth of this uh, proliferation of this crime, you had to call it a crime, uh, is reaching out to high school children at their impressionable age and educate, making them aware without alarming them making them aware of the various dimensions and laws relating to human trafficking. Would that be a good long-term strategy in preventing it's, this? It's going on, actually. It's going on in the state of Telangana. I told you about uh, the women's safety wing. They have connected almost many schools now. Similarly, we have student police cadet program. Through that also, we are training the students for this minas of uh, human trafficking. Then about the child sexual abuse, what is good touch, what is bad touch, all this aspect we are covering. Now, in fact, in Telangana, there is in the syllabus itself, the sexual abuse and uh, uh, other things, of, say forms of trafficking and all, that is a part of syllabus now. Till oh. time. Yeah. Okay, here is a, I don't know, you, you may choose to answer or not to answer, but uh, Mr. Papu Serma from California, he says, do you often or sometimes experience pressure from politicians as a commissioner to release or not to take action on traffickers, traffic, uh, trafficking people involved in the trafficking? See, when, once the trafficking networks are busted and all, now media, you know, hyperactive. Immediately, everything will be in the public eyes, public domain. So uh, when, when it is you are concealing it. You are not giving information outside. Then this kind of pressures are obvious. But nowadays, because of the social media is there, then the visual media, print media, they immediately make a news of it. And everyone knows about it. When everyone knows about it, then interference from the, in, see, we are in democracy. And then democratically elected those public representatives. That will be less if it is uh, in the public domain, public eye. We also have our own Twitter handle. We also have our Facebook page. We right. also have Instagram account. We also right. keep spreading the message. So everything is transparent nowadays. You can uh, count on us. You can send to Foswell. We'll also help you in propagating you know, such good uh, measures. You know, We'll be very happy. We have a very interesting in colleague. Fact, I just want to tell you, in 2004, when I conducted my first raid in Hyderabad, it was on one resort run by one famous film personality. We rescued 19 girls from Kolkata, Mumbai, Pune. And then one of my senior officers, he now retired, he called me, why you are doing this thing? There will be rapes tomorrow on our sisters, women in society. Oh. In every house, there should be a dustbin. So like that, we should allow such thing in society. That was his own thinking. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's a very, very complex issue. It's a, you know, human psyche, see, you know, see, yeah. Today also some officers, retired officers, they keep asking me. Why are you? We have lost you, Mahesh. Uh, we can't hear you. We lost you suddenly. You can see me now? Yeah, now I can hear okay. you. We lost, okay. we missed okay. what you said. No, no. Hello. Are you able to hear him? I'm not able to hear him. Uh, I'm, uh, we can hear, sir. No, no, hear no, yeah, we, now we, we can, can we, we, can. Can. we, we can. can hear. Okay. We can. I can hear him. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Now uh, we have a, a a brother, Samir. He's made a very interesting proposition. He says uh, uh, there's a data mining tool specifically for solving issues posed by websites like Locanto that you mentioned you know, this, uh, to decipher the coded language used by human trafficking brokers. Um, uh, are you, is your IT wing also 
using these tools? He's an artificial intelligence guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I have to check it. We have separate wing is there. Uh huh. But uh, I will check it. But what happening in Locanto generally? Na, it's a open like a. It's like a open source of information. Everything is uh, available there with the phone number, with the photograph. Everything is available there. There is no need of even the decoding and all. Uh, yes, for the dark web, yes, we may have to take help of. Uh, yeah experts but uh, look into even even we we are having lot of works in our hand when that much of uh, manpower that much of time is not available right yeah have, our plate is always full absolutely <laughs> <laughs> that is another limitation yeah definitely uh, there's a question from iphone uh, would you like to identify yourself who's this iphone there's no name you know he's asking that uh, to your point about not encouraging begging because that is also organized crime uh, suppose he would like to report it is there a number he can report it to uh, phone number see dial 100 is the best i see yeah that is the best number oh that's from swarna uh, okay yeah. <laughs> okay they also take uh, complaints on such things yes dial 100 number you can inform this is the problem or every commission like in hyderabad say there are three police commissariat so right. we have that whatsapp number just now i communicated that 9490617111 that is the rajkonda whatsapp number right so that is again you can upload photo video audio everything there right so i think we'll take uh, the last um, question on on whatsapp i have seen message i have seen some messages which which say that if you see uh, children begging in the squares then uh, don't money if if you feel if you feel some uh, compassion for them give them some food but never give money this is a good alternative actually mm -hmm. so they may be hungry give them directly some food yes yeah. because so that the trafficking also will get prevented someone is living on the earnings by these children mm -hmm. through this begging money Sameer, I think we'll pass your question. I don't think it is related to this topic, but you can always ask Mr. Bhagwat uh, offline. Yeah. Yeah, that we can do. Yeah. So I think with that, uh, uh, we will stop the questions and may I now call upon our secretary, Mr. Subhas Chandra Bose, to propose a formal vote of thanks. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhagwat. Mr. Bose, Thank you, Super Guru. I really had a good time here today. And uh, if anyone having any more questions, uh, my email ID I will share. That is, uh, you can, I think you can type it here also. I'll send it in our group. We have a yeah, group email. Uh, I'll just. Uh, yeah, on the chat if you can. Bose Garu, are you online? Yeah, you see in a chat box now. Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah. MMBIPS at gmail.com. Yeah. Mr. Bose. Bose Karu. Somsekarau, would you like to find out him? No, no, may have Jeptara. Okay. Matthew is not with me. Okay. No, no, that's okay. I mean, uh, I think um, it's uh, uh, repeating uh, the same thing when we say, you know, we are delighted to have had uh, Mr. Bhagwat with us this uh, evening. And um, it has been an eye opener on this topic. Uh, I'd like to thank the family members of Dr. Gajanan Dalvi and Mrs. Ratan Dalvi for establishing an annual, annual endowment which facilitated holding of this meeting in this month of February. And also thank Mr. Uh, Bose, Subhash Chandra Bose, our secretary. I think he has some connectivity problems for his annual uh, logistic sponsorship in the name of his wife. Thank you, Dr. Vandana, for the prayer. 
Professor Vishwas, I still say you are the principal of College of Engineering, Pune. Uh, <laughs> thank you for telling us about your student, Mahesh. And Ravi, for that lovely introduction uh, of the topic and the distinguished uh, speaker. So we are very uh, grateful to you. And our next few meetings are as follows. You know, we, our meetings are always held on the third Saturday of the month. This is the 13th year. We have never missed a meeting, even during the pandemic, uh, except one month when the, during the lockdown of March, we had to conduct the meeting in the next month. In the month of March, Dr. Jagdish Sheth, Professor of Marketing from the University of Emory, Georgia, USA, is going to speak to us on the increasing central role of India in the world geostrategic order. A very interesting topic. And in April, on 16th of April, we have Ms. Mini Menon. She is the founder of Live History India from Mumbai. Uh, she has a beautiful website. You should all visit it. Uh, she's going to talk to us on stories that make India. And in May, on the 21st of May, we have Mr. Karthik Hariharan. He is son of our um, Foswell uh, Adyar uh, president, Dr. Hariharan's son. Uh, he is a director with Apple. He is specifically heading Apple Health in Palo Alto, California. He will talk to us on Bitcoin demystified. That's a hot topic, cryptocurrency. So we have some very interesting speakers lined up for the next uh, three months. So thank you all for joining. And thank you, Mr. Bhagwat, again, for spending the evening with us. And um, look forward to seeing you all at the March meeting. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, you Siddhar sir. Thank you, Subhrao Garu, and thank you today's sponsor, Mr. Uh, Nitin Dalvi. Nitin Dalvi. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Vandana. Thank you bye bye. Thank Thanks, okay. Mr. Mahesh. Thanks, Subhrao. Thank you, Andy.